So overnight, you may have noticed that a new update went live for Black Ops Cold War. And depending on when you were able to download it, or if at all, you may be wondering what changed. Today, we're going to be breaking down everything that did change here at this, both on the visible front-facing side of things, as well as on the back end and some changes made here, which is a bulk of this update overall. Today, we're going to be breaking down everything that changed, both on the front-facing visible side of changes, as well as things on the back end, which is a large portion of this update, and to get you ready for everything you need to know as we ramp up towards Season 1's launch as of next week. That said, as we go along, let me hear your thoughts down below. Are you looking forward to Season 1's launch next week? Are you looking forward to any content in particular? Are you liking any of these changes that we have seen here out of this update? Whatever it is, let me know your thoughts. As well, if you are new to the channel, do be sure to hit that subscribe button as we're on that road to 400,000 subscribers, and we'll keep you up to date with all things Black Ops Cold War, Warzone, and anything in relation to Season 1. If you guys are interested in joining the community, I'd love to have you. But said, let's talk about these changes here made with this update. So, as mentioned, last night we saw an update go out across all the main platforms, ranging in different sizing depending on what platform you're on. But the main basis of this update was really to be a quality of life update to the game ahead of the scheduled coming content on the 16th. This will not be the last title update we see before the launch of Season 1, and in fact, there's another update coming to Black Ops Cold War specifically as of next Tuesday on the 15th. So, be sure to be ready to discuss a lot of stuff in terms of update contents over the next week because there's a lot on our hands. But as for the update itself, let's start out with some of the cooler, flashier stuff, I guess, before we dive into the nitty gritty and the things that may become kind of droning and monotonous because there's so many backend changes. Now, on the front facing side, right now you won't see them as this video going live, but shortly thereafter at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern, and 6 p.m. in the UK, Treyarch are giving us two free bundles to help pass the time between now and season one. With that timing in mind, simply all you have to do is log into the game from that start point of 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time today to the start of Season 1 on the 16th, and you'll be credited with these bundles. Now, as mentioned, this immediately as of going live won't be available, but very well could be depending on when you watch this video, if you watch it a couple of hours after its first initial publication, so check your game as of 10 a.m. Pacific Time. But these bundles firstly coming with the Field Research Bundle, which is an epic Operator skin for Park, an epic SMG Blueprint, an epic Reticle, an epic Calling Card, and a Rare Weapon Charm, and the second bundle includes the Certified Certified bundle, which comes with an epic operator skin for Garcia, a rare assault rifle blueprint, an epic weapon reticle, and an epic weapon charm. So make sure you take advantage of those, redeem those when available. Now, this update also sets up the front facing side of the coming new playlist within this game for the week of the Motherland Mosh Pit, a combination mosh pit of TDM, Domination, Kill Confirmed, and Hardpoint on the maps of Moscow and Crossroads Strike. This will also be available in Hardcore for those that want to play in Hardcore as well, but that also means that Nuketown 24 7 will be going away finally finally, but they did mention that one, the map is still in the regular map rotations in all playlists, but also two, Nuketown 24-7 will be returning with a special twist in Season 1, so as early as of next week. But that's likely referring to the holiday version of the map. If you remember Christmas Crash from Modern Warfare Remastered and the old COD 4 mods, think the same thing, but for Nuketown. That's what we're likely going to be seeing here as this special twist. Later this week, starting on Saturday the 12th, double XP and double weapon XP will actually be live in-game until the launch of Season 1 on the 16th, so that'll be some great time to grind out the game, a couple of days of, again, just an added boost for your overall rank or your weapon rank. But on the front-facing side of things, that's kind of it. There may not be much more that you notice outside of this stuff, and that's kind of to be expected when this update has more so been a quality of life update more so than anything else. So it focuses on the core experience and some fundamentals ahead of the season one content update and then subsidiary war zone integration. So jumping into some of that fundamental stuff here that was changed on a global perspective, we saw some stability in which there were added crash fixes related to ray tracing on next generation consoles and general stability improvements overall across all platforms. Now, I don't know if this covers the crashing and many issues that I've heard about, but here's to hoping. Progression on a level basis had addressed an issue where prestige levels and prestige icons could display inaccurately in lobby menus. It also addressed an issue where after prestige 1, that icon could display in place of the commander rank icon in the after action report. As for camo progression, we actually saw a couple of things here changed that is a big thing for camo grinders. Firstly, it addressed an issue where mastery camos were not progressing properly for some players, i.e. the players would have to get diamond twice on some weapons, it just wouldn't unlock sometimes, and so on. 
but it also reduced the number of kills without dying from three to two for the launchers and the M79, which may not seem like a lot, but it's definitely a big change for the camo challenges associated with it, because that was one of the most tedious and probably frustrating challenges associated with the camo challenges for the launchers. So a big change there for sure. Jumping over to some game mode adjustments here, we saw that Hardpoint had adjustments in spawns for various zones on the maps of Checkmate, Garrison, Crossroad Strike, and Moscow. Now, this is huge because I don't know if you've played a lot of Hardpoint, but Hardpoint spawns were, to put it nicely, really bad. So hopefully these adjustments are better fits for the flow of the game mode, but time will tell on that one. As for control, the attacker spawn locations to Moscow, Miami, and Checkmate were adjusted to reduce the travel times to objectives, and in the case of Moscow in particular, it additionally was changed to be closer to mid-map when B has been captured. For Dirty Bomb, there were quite a few changes here within this game mode. Firstly, it had a reduction in spawn protection time that nullified explosives. Explosives. The example they gave was the War Machine, but that's also something that I don't know how much of an issue this would be compared to, say, regular 6v6 on maps like Crossroad Strike. It also addressed an issue where players could collide on redeployment. It addressed an issue where players could land on each other if they waited for the auto-deploy during infill, and a couple of other minor details as well that fixed some rare bugs. And Score Streaks in Dirty Bomb, though, reduced the spawn rates of the Gunship, Chopper Gunner, and VTOL, which was a much-needed adjustment, if you ask me, and also fixed some issues with the Cruise Missile HUD. For combined Combined arms, it adjusted the interact radius on mounted turrets so that they were easier to attach to. In custom games, they added a few new options. Firstly, the score reset on death and score streak death penalty. For the score resetting on death, it allowed for some score to be lost, none or all. That's entirely up to the person setting that. And then in round-based game modes, we saw an adjustment for players being kicked for inactivity despite actually playing and being active. For weapons, jumping over to this topic of discussion, surprisingly, we don't have any weapon balance here with this update. I'd imagine that this is next week's Season 1 update, that's where we'll see this kind of stuff, but for right now, there were no adjustments, so those weapons like the M16, the AUG, the other dominant weapons are still going to be powerhouses, and if you still need to get them gold, I'd highly recommend doing that now so you don't have to deal with them post-nerf. But we saw an added polish to the visual kickbacks when hip-firing weapons, we saw an issue with the Howler addressed with the animation while firing and aiming down sight on the last shot, it fixed an issue with launchers where they could lock on a stationary turrets and combined arms, and then optics had an addressed issue that could prevent thermal scopes from showing a thermal overlay when riding a vehicle. For score streaks in general, we saw some changes to the care package, combat bow, cruise missile, VTOL escort, and chopper gunner. For the care package, the care package explosion no longer damages teammates in hardcore, and it addressed an issue that could cause care packages to go through the roof on checkmate. The combat bow addressed an issue where the TAC mask icon would incorrectly display when damaging enemies with a combat bow. The cruise missile addressed an issue where damaging a cruise missile would not display a hit marker correctly. The VTOL Escort addressed an issue where the camera would be destroyed from going out of bounds, and the Chopper Gunner had an adjustment that will now follow its correct shorter path on Crossroad Strike instead of its wider path from Combined Arms, meaning that you will still actually be able to use this thing on Crossroad Strike, whereas you couldn't before. The maps of Crossroad, Armada, and Garrison had some slight adjustments to it. Crossroads, now you can use parachutes in the modes in which you have the ability to get up to those higher peaks of elevation. Armada is the same, you can now use those parachutes in traditional modes as well. And Garrison addressed an issue where there were explosive barrels that would never detonate. Field upgrades of the trophy system at Salt Pack and Field Mike had some adjustments to it. Trophy systems will now destroy incoming trophy systems, so if there's one on the ground and you throw it in the proximity of it, it will now explode that, and address an issue where the trophy system would occasionally not destroy projectiles, and fix some other smaller bugs with the trophy system. The assault pack will now be destroyed if an enemy uses it, and the field mic addressed an issue where players could earn double score if the field mics were actually overlapping and something happened within them. There's a handful of issues also outside of this in a general sense that were adjusted as well, such as general cleanups and bug fixes for finishing moves, issues with mouse navigation on mouse and keyboard in theater mode, which is fantastic to see because theater mode on PC, especially a mouse and keyboard for whatever reason, just is almost entirely broken. They said that they fixed an issue with voice chat volume setting functionalities. Hopefully that means that voice chat overall has just gotten better because it's not good by any means right now. And then there were a few other things. I can leave the full patch notes down there in the description below if you guys want to check out the more minuscule stuff. But to save you guys time, I want to talk about a lot of the more important details of this update. Now for zombies, we saw a bunch of fixes across the board here in which, again, some of those key standout things are, say, incorrect mastery cam 
of progression information to be displayed now from reading that it doesn't specify exactly but i would imagine that fixes up the dark aether glitch where i think it's if you get 17 gold weapons and zombies you end up getting dark aether for whatever reason so that should be fixed out as well it fixed an issue where incorrect prestige icons could display in the zombies menus that meaning the black ops 4 placeholder prestige icons would be showing up those should no longer be the case it addressed an issue where the elite eliminations were not registering properly in the combat record and subsequently sometimes in camo progression it added various stability fixes for d machina it also added in new season one intel to discover in d machina as well so you might find those on random zombie spawns and drops it fixed the various number of exploits and different bugs within the map among a variety of different bugs pertaining to weapons trials the mystery box the main quest ping features audio and ui so there was a lot done here again on the more minor detailed side of things that again leave the full thing down there in the description below but they kind of just try to clean everything up here for the launch of season one and ahead of that so a lot of cool stuff in terms of some main features but also again some stuff that across the board may not be too noticeable unless you specifically go and look for the more minute details but overall that's the update here in a nutshell and everything that really changed and that you should be aware of again link in the description below if you guys want to check out the full patch notes in their entirety down to the very last detail but those were adjusted here and that's where we're going to wrap it up so love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below what do you guys think here of this update are you liking anything in particular maybe not so much whatever it is feel free to let me know your thoughts but hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did make sure you drop a like down below and of course if you're new to the channel make sure you guys subscribe so it was a single thing we're gonna get all things black ops cold war war zone and anything cod related leading up to season one we got you covered here on the channel so if you're interested hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing if you also want to follow me over on twitter and instagram those are the best places to get content outside of youtube probably live on both those so if you guys want to start up a conversation ask me a question whatever it may be that link is down there in the description below that said thanks so much for watching my name is espresso i'll see you guys later take care and peace.